This public hearing is now called to order at 6 p.m. This hearing is held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, an act relative to protection of the wetlands as most recently amended. Notice of time and place of this hearing was published in the Advocate on November 8th. It was also posted at the Town Hall. Persons wishing to be heard will be called in the following order. First order of business is minutes for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved and so passed. Meeting mail, Marion? Uh, Mar Marilee? <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. No, actually, there, I don't think there is a news leak. Okay. Old business. Notice of intent to cost the 216 Leonard Street, SC0010531. A notice of intent was filed by Timmy DaCosta for property located at 216 Leonard Street, Map 20, Lot 9A. The applicant proposes to install a retaining wall on the river side of the property within 200 foot of the riverfront, riverfront area. Plan name is Subsurface Sewage Disposal for Fernando and Maria da Costa. Plan date is August 13th, 2016. Um, this was the one that uh, he had to file with Natural Heritage because he was on the, uh, you know, on the river and part of them to bring our habitat. So he filed with Natural Heritage. They sent back a letter last week that said, uh, no, this project does not constitute a take. So I sent that letter to DDP and we got a final letter. So now you guys can vote on it. Because I know you've already looked at it. What does that mean, Mary? Really not a take? Um, a, a take is uh, going to harm the, the endangered species. So if it's not a take, they can be fine. Who's well protected with that wall? With uh, the wall there? Well, they didn't. They didn't get into details like that, but that they just decided it was not a take. That it wasn't going to harm the species. Right. Right. Basically. And they looked at it at what state? <clears throat> Where they, when they went, did it, they must have gone. There. I think they probably looked at the plants. Just the plants. Yeah, I can't imagine that they come down here for you know. Well, they but they go to every place where people. Why? Why? Because there's not that many of them. You know, in the offices. Oh. Most there's probably enough space between the wall and the actual river itself for the turtles to nest if they want to, mm -hmm. on that side of the street, any on that side of the, yeah. the river. So. Yeah. Unlikely the turtles gonna jump off the wall. So. Yeah, no, they should be fine. So I guess we're looking for a neg negative determination. So no, we're no, we need an order of conditions. Order of conditions. Okay. That's up to you guys. Oh. I can't do it from here. To accept as is with a retaining wall. Mm. That sounds good. Okay, I have a motion to accept as is with the wall. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I, any opposed? Support majority of everyone, so. Motion passes. Motion consent is granted. You'd be glad to get the order conditions finally. Does that stop him from doing that? Uh, no, he actually, this was an after the fact finally, so right. the, wall, the wall is all finished, you right. know. But um, it's been on our books for a while now. But so I've been looking at it for quite a while now. Yeah, since this summer, I think. But his, he doesn't need that. No, no, he doesn't. Her. It's just, you know, basically. Okay, new business. Request for a determination of applicability. Brandon Ferreira, Quaker Lane. A request for determination <coughs> applicability was filed by Brandon Ferreira for property located at Quaker Lane, Cushnet Mass, Map 5, Lot 10L. The applicant proposes to construct a single family house with on site septic system, private water supply well. Grading, landscaping, and appurtenances within 100 foot buffer zone of, to the bordering vegetated wetlands. Good evening. 
Uh, for the record, Niles Zager from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, so here before you, my, uh, my the, uh, the homeowner and my client, uh, Brandon Ferrer, is also here uh, to answer any questions that you may have. Um, so what he's looking to do is he's looking to construct a single family home for him and his family. Um, this is on Quaker Lane. It's on the north side of Quaker Lane across from the state, uh, just a chip away stables. Um, so this is a vacant pro piece of property. It's wooded currently. Um, it's owned by his family. Um, he's looking to purchase it. Um, so what we did was we had the property delineated by Stephen Schmiel, um, and he delineated, delineated, and you can see the flags as shown on the plan. Um, what we proposed is we proposed uh, the house, this, this wetland here comes, juts out here, and then it comes back, and then goes back around as well. So in order for us to get a house and septic and well all to fit, we we had to put the, um, the dwelling in the rear of the property. Um, we meet all the zoning requirements for a lot, as well as setbacks uh, to the property. Um, we also had a perk test done that was witnessed by the Board of Health, um, and we meet their requirement. They have a 75-foot setback from um, septic system to the uh, wetlands. We provide at a minimum of that. We are also providing a 50-foot buffer, a minimum of 50-foot buffer to all the resource areas as shown on the plan. Um, so, you know, I feel as though we're giving a pretty good significant uh, buffer to those for protection. Um, the driveway is, we're hugging the driveway on the, would be the westerly side of the property in order to meet that buffer. The well is up in the front here because of the location of the septic system on the abutting property. Um, so we had to put the well up in the front, but again, we still meet that 50 foot, that we still have that 50 foot buffer that we're providing. So there'll be a little bit of clearing here. This is our, our limited clearing here. So that's, the rest of that will all be left in its natural state. That's not a tree line, right? That's, that's, that is a tree line. That is the tree line? That's what we're proposing. No, no, that's what we're proposing. That's our limited work. Okay. That's our limited work with erosion control. So no, currently this entire site is wooded. Right to, right, right to, to the road. Right to the road. That's correct. Okay. Well, it's got to be at the bottom. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next to um, what was his name? His county. It's before that. Before you it's, get there. It's right before uh, his property. It's all, um, it's all my wife's family's property. Robert. Robert. Yep. Kayla? How far is that well from the house? Uh, it's a, it's a good uh, couple hundred feet, like 150 feet minimum. Yeah, I mean, these, this circle here, to get this, this is the 100 foot circle here. As you can see, we're plenty far enough from our septic. But in order to get 50 feet from the wetlands and get this to all work, to get this, the, septic, the existing septic system with the budding is over here, we could not get it to fit without putting it up in the front, unfortunately. So there will be a water service that will be run right along the edge of the driveway. Like that's going around. That, we have that depicted on the plan as well. Yeah, it'll just be a standard, a standard one inch water service. That's all we're talking about. There's no setback rules about the driveway from the property. Area. That's correct, that's correct. Um, we, I believe we're 10 feet, uh, that's just in order to be able to give it a little bit of room to grade and what have you. But yeah, you, you by right have the right to put the driveway right on the property edge. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we would ever want to do that, but yeah, you, you, get, you, could, like, you get easement. Right? That's correct. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Good one. So um, I see infiltration basin. Uh, yep. Yeah. So we're for, for the for the um, to meet the stormwater regulations. That the town of Cushion has adopted. Um, in order to meet that, we're proposing um, roof trains uh, that will capture the capture that we basically will all be piped on the ground. The gutters will be piped on the ground and will be tied into these chambers, which are basically just an extension of the you know the same same thing as the septic system, um, but just in a smaller version because it, the side, the flow is obviously a lot less than what the septic system is. Um, but this meets that requirement and obviously recharges. Uh, back into the groundwater, uh, which I believe meets uh, you know the, the standard that's required. Mm -hmm. What are you proposing for a barrier there? 
Uh, it's a 40 mil liner. It's like basically a rubber liner. It's an impervious barrier. All that does um, is it allows the group. Title V requires a 15 foot um, breakout, a 15 foot minimum from the edge of the septic system out at a at a grade at the top of the system, and then you carry a three to one slope. When you put the when you put the liner in, um, you can put it right at the five foot overdig. And what that allows that to do is it, it pulls all the grade in because um, you can a three to one slope from there. And all that does is lessen the impact to, to within the buffer zone. So that's why we did it for, for multiple reasons. One, to minimize impact, but also for cost because it's a lot less stuff. The house is outside the 100 foot buffer. Um, the septic system is, like I said, um, so this is the 50, we're about 75 feet away. We're just over 75 feet from the septic system. And how big is the house? Um, it's a, what was it, 30 20, by? 2610 square footage. Yeah. It is, uh, it was like 28 by 38. The, the garage is 24 foot bump out. The house is 32 by 30. Uh, 32 by 30. Okay. So that's four bedrooms? That's correct. Yeah, so this is a, what we, the grade here, because this has a high water table essentially, because it, the, the soil was good, luckily, um, when we did the park test. Um, but the water table was high. Even though this is up on a, kind of up on a knoll, the water table was high. So there's going to be a significant amount of material being brought in. Um, in order to minimize that and make it usable for his garage and propose they um, drive on the garage. So this, this is at the, you know, at the, basement level here and then they'll walk up into the house from here. But that's what you see here. This is a side entrance. We'll tuck on the garage and call it. Again just minimizes impact when we fill in the way I do. And what erosion control measures did you say? Uh, we're, we're proposing a silt sock. Uh, 12, you know a 12 inch silt sock. Uh, all the way around. It gets blown in? It gets blown in. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> and then just staked right to the ground. So to me, they're the best way. They're easy to install. <laughs> nobody installs silk fence properly. I mean, nobody wants to dig it in, trench it in. It's, it becomes difficult. Don't, I, I shouldn't say that. That's, that's, that's probably ill of me to say, but it's much more difficult to do. So a lot of people just leave the flap, and then if it washes through, I'm sure Melody sees it all the time, and then it washes through. Mm -hmm. At least this, it stays nice and firm to the ground and it works a lot better. Mm -hmm. The only thing you do have to be careful with these is they do um, decay fairly quickly, so you have to stay on top of them. But that's for larger projects. So something like this is, you know, it's not going to be, you're not talking years of construction. Hopefully not, right? <laughs> <laughs> Projected start date? Uh, I would say hopefully begin in the spring, as soon as. So but, yeah. but then also, but also as far as tree clearing, if we tree get clearing, we want to try to get it done in the winter. Yeah. So we're ready to go in the spring. So you're gonna leave the trees that are uh, on this side of this limit of work, right? All this will all be left natural. That's all natural. So this will be staked out in the field by a surveyor. Um, now I'll be staked out with limited clearing. Because first, obviously, he's got to take the trees. They're going to put their erosion control measures in, um, and then it'll be left from there. And then we'll make sure that he stays on top of the, that erosion control, as I'm sure you will as well. We yeah, appreciate leaving the life as it is off the outside of the school. Yeah, of course, that's always nice when people do that. Um, the the other thing I wanted to um, to, was it, I wanted to mention was oh, we also proposed a, a dewatering basin. Um, this is only as if necessary. So what happens when you have a higher water table and you're constructing in the spring and you, you're going to put your foundation, dig the hole, and you have water. Um, and in order for them to do what they have to do is they have to pump it out. Well, obviously, back a long time ago, people used to just dump it off to the lowest spot, which always was the wetland. So what we propose is a little dewatering basin. It's just a, a smaller, depends on the amount of water that they need, but typically a 10 by 10 where they wrap it in erosion control. Um, put riprap in there and pump it into that. So what that does is even if it does over top, it's filtering out all that sediment. Um, and so that way you're only getting clean groundwater going out to the, out to the, you know, out to the, you know, off site. So. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, 
just another, it's just a measure for, another measure for the contract that follows. We have not submitted to, con to the Board of Health yet, only because I know the Board of Health typically likes to have conservation approval before. But I feel as though, I mean, we, like I said, we had Joe Carrera out there from the Board of Health. He witnessed the parks. I think it's a pretty standard. It's a pretty standard design as far as septic systems go. So. And you didn't have to do anything with That's correct. Right. There's already an existing, an existing one. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Makes it easy. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds beautiful. <coughs> Anybody have any other questions? Beautiful piece of property. Yeah, it looks good. Mm -hmm. It's a thorough presentation. Thank you. Okay, again, it's up to you guys. I can't start any just anything from up here. So let's make a motion. I second that motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next order of new business is Notice of Intent, NSTAR Electric Company doing business at Eversource Energy, 143 Peckham Road, SE001. X, 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 X. So I guess they didn't get that number yet. <laughs> no, I have not seen actually our DEP file number. Notice of intent was filed by Eversource Energy for property located at 143 Peckham Road, map 2, lots 3C and 3D. The applicant proposes to pave the access road ap entrance apron and install three duct banks within the access apron prior to paving in order to establish electrical conduits for future lighting posts within 100 feet of the buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. Plan name is a Cushing LNG facility, LNG access tie-in road project. Plan date is October 2018. Thank you. For the record, I'm Amanda Poole, senior wetland scientist with tie-in bond here this evening for Eversource Energy. I'm going to do my best to be on a white here because I did it car swap with my husband and all my stuff's in my car. So um, you're all pretty familiar with the site because I know we did some improvements there last year. Um, but essentially, that main entrance driveway off Peckham Road, that's where this is, and that big sliding entry gate's here. And so this is the entrance to that perimeter road. And currently, the facility is doing a lot of improvements that are exempt from the Wetlands Protection Act and outside buffer within the facility. And just because of the sheer amount of Stat lab personnel and construction going on. The daily tanker deliveries can't go in and out of there because it, it just doesn't work with the construction schedule. So they're currently going here through a new cut in the fence. Mm -hmm. um, this piece is getting really rutted and muddy and tracking dirt out. And so essentially, they're just looking to pave this entrance apron to connect in to that alternate access route. It's about, the, this whole limit of work in orange is about 4,900 square feet. Uh, the new impervious would be within the existing gravel road footprint, so it's not going to be outside of any sort of existing road footprint, and it's currently a, a very hard packed gravel. Um, so we don't, it's a slight change over existing congi conditions, but same footprint. Um, and the other 29 or 2,500 square feet are just associated with, you know, our erosion controls and some of the conduits. They are hoping at some point to do a lighting study, uh, which they have not done yet, and that's sort of scheduled you know, out in the future, and they're hoping to put lighting kind of up here somewhere outside of the resource area, just to sort of illuminate for those early morning and late afternoon truck deliveries when we don't have as much daylight. And so there are three four inch conduits. Um, the pole boxes are gonna kind of extend right to the edge of the roadway there, and they'll tie in to um, electrical control right there. And I think, generally speaking, for conduits of that size, from what I've seen, it probably will not be wider than a two to three foot trench. And they just wanted to get those in before they paved the road, because obviously, once they do the lighting study, they figure out they want lights, they don't want to cut into the pavement. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, we have a BBW here that kind of connects into a larger wetland system. 
um, off the sheet, and uh, the pink is our 100 foot buffer zone. And there are erosion controls still in there from past projects, and I looked at them this Saturday, and it is the best trenched in and installed silt fence I've ever seen in my 13 years of doing this. Um, and I, in my best professional judgment, I think it would suffice to continue using it. And it is also backed up by a 12 inch um, silt sock that is still looking pretty good. And also of note, the elevation pitches this way. So any drainage won't be contributing to that. And so there will be new, no new point source discharge to the wetland. And any drainage is going to actually tie into um, the, the drainage system that's inside the fenced in facility. So that's the basic overview. I won't bore you to tears with any more details. I'll just turn it over to you if you have questions. I wasn't there Saturday, so. I missed you guys there, though. I have that printed. Oh, look at that. See how much ink I wasted today. So, <laughs> so again, just sort of to orient you, you know, when you kind of stopped for the, um, when you've been there for the previous site visit to park here. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect. And so it's, you can kind of see right here, kind of this sort of triangle is essentially what they're looking to pave. And this is just this kind of piece right here. And this is what's cutting into the fence. Um, and again, it's just this piece right here. And the uh, pavement is what? It's um, asphalt? Yeah, it's just going to be asphalt. So that's uh, another follow-up question. I know um, they're wanting to get this done before the paving moratorium gets in place for the winter. Um, so I didn't know how the timing would work for the issue and if we are issued an order of conditions. And I know the uh, conservation staff records it. So I don't, I didn't, I wasn't sure about the timeline of everything. So yeah, yeah, no, that's the, 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 the issue. Okay. Um, but I'll check the details. Okay. Okay. Because I don't mind about it. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> super. But, um, but yeah, is there any other questions? I was hoping these photos would sort of help and. Without having the full number, we can't really do anything anyway, can we? No, you can't vote on it until you have a file number. Okay. So we can continue. But it, I, it, continue I've been there enough times. And I know I think I know that area of the property fairly well, okay. and I don't see any big problem yeah. whether they're going to get the number from the state in time to get. Can asphalt. you approve con conditional upon the issuance of the file number? Uh, so we sure. wouldn't need to continue necessarily to another hearing. Sure. Yeah, they can do that. Um, I mean, we understand. I mean, because if, if we by chance get the file number in three days rather than having to continue for another two weeks of so. Oh I see. So you can get started right away as soon as you get your number. Exactly, yeah. If we can yeah. no, that's conditional uh, if that's okay with you, that's happy with us. I think it would be an improvement. Yeah. I don't yeah. personally have a problem with that either. Yeah. I just I know in the past we didn't have a full number we haven't been able to really what's the present right. well that's what tell them the cost in there so Right, so what's the precedent? Would this be the first? I don't know. Um, I can't think of anybody that started ahead of time, but just we I wouldn't say well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't start. Start. Yeah, we wouldn't start. She anymore. just wants to be able to start right. and she gets that last well, one. Once the order of conditions is met, met. Um, so, so, right. you so, approve right. it. So they you receive sign it tonight and then. Issue it, yeah. Once, as as once the final, it. yeah, the file number, and then we wouldn't start until it's recorded, anyways, in accordance with the law. So if they get a yeah. number tomorrow, they have to wait two weeks. Right. And they're actually proposing that they don't wait in two weeks. Whenever they get that number. If you're um, comfortable with that for a yeah, project of this nature. So. Now I don't know what the history is on this on that procedure. I don't think there's any history on it. I don't. I can't. Since I've been on the board, I don't remember ever doing it ahead, but it's always been something, I mean, this is kind of like somebody putting a driveway in. It is a driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's a commercial it's a driveway. A driveway. <laughs> it is a commercial driveway, but it's still a driveway. And it's not like building a whole house or tearing up a whole lot. The, the lot is already, I mean, they're probably going to go, they're probably going to just blacktop right over the, the hot stone that's already there. Mm -hmm. I would say that's a very good base build base. <laughs> Yeah. Purpose of this, uh, yeah, well, like I said, it's 
Personally, I don't have a problem with letting them go ahead as soon as we get the number. I don't have a problem with that myself. I'm, si I'm sitting here, so. Yeah, I don't think there's. I don't think there's any. Yeah, they're more. They're more. I think the question lies on whether or not we accept it without meeting and, and without a number to get the number for them to start the project. Right, that seems to be more the concern than the actual part of itself. Yeah, I think the understanding would be you wouldn't give me the order of conditions, Until, but you'll kind of have it. So, so if, if in theory, if we get the number before your next meeting, meeting like, it could possibly you know go right, on and get recorded. Like that on the board of health kind of I, yeah, I understand concerns yeah, about setting precedents for well, yeah. projects that like, you know, that might not align with. Well. They would know what's going on. This right. sounds like an easy one, but I don't want it to be right. used. And that's yeah. just yeah. Which is right. Right. No, I certainly understand. I, I wouldn't ask that if we were talking about it against the payment moratorium. If, if you're not comfortable with what I, my suggestion, we can, we can, we can hold on it. No, it, was, it was just more of a question. But it's hard to ask. How it's been handled. It's good discussion. Just, just how it's been handled. But like I said, you know, you guys basically. Um, Decided what you wanted to do about the cost before you get this number, and then when you get the number, finally it was okay to sign it. But well, the cost was actually but his wall was finished. His, yeah, was so he had done the, the work before he even came to the yeah. committee. Right. So, so that's another issue. We're asking permission, okay. not for right. this. <laughs> right. So they're already they're already they're, they're ahead Sorry. of that. Uh, yeah. So yeah. even if it's three days, let's say that's Friday, and then there's the weekend. You're only looking at another. Five days to tell you the truth to do it the right way. I, I, just on the off chance that it would speed it up, I, I know that the facility would because they have the plans and the design designer ready to go. So I, I, I think any days help for the weather it gets too cold and we can't pave. Yeah, um, like start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the asphalt plant usually closes like mid December, so let's <clears throat> get close. Yeah. No, I think, no. The holidays and things like that. Yeah. <coughs> so, if we get the number. So, the ball is, the ball is on this side of the table, guys. Yeah, so wait, when you get the number, then give her a call and they'll right. say it's okay. Right. As long as they're you good with that? about the project, it's okay that? with you guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. Then, yeah, as soon as we get the number, we'll call them and they can get started. Okay. But wait for that phone call. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, 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 I will advise them that way. I just thought it would save you having this item on your agenda next time. Yeah, and then I can get the signatures, right? And then when I get the DEP number and we can put them. Just how, does, how do you want to do that? I would get the signatures tonight. Get the signatures tonight, exactly. Because I would need that to go down to the Coastal County. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that works for me. Okay. Okay, so it's on your side of the table, guys. Right. I can't make a motion from this chair. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll make a motion to accept the project as it lies without the title number, but as soon as the title number has been issued, um, we will not have to meet to stop the project. I have a second on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Looks like that's unanimous. Thank you. I appreciate the accommodation and consideration. Well, it's only because everything is clear and it's, it's not a large project. It's like you said, it's mainly an extension of a road onto the main road. So it's not a huge project. And it was not interfere everything with Everything that the, this company has done, like the turtle thing that they get out of. The woods dead. Yeah. Everything is done right. It's kind of like the Kushner company yeah. when they do a project that's done right <laughs> and it's done done to the letter. It's not like haphazard. That's really nice. Thank you. So we tried to so. <laughs> well, thank you very right. much, and I'll follow up with DEP as well tomorrow. So I know they got our filing fee, so sometimes it just takes them a little while. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they'll send you a copy.
Thank you all for your time. Enjoy your new space. Thanks. <laughs> all right, agent updates. Marley. Okay, um, the big one to update you on is Aruda. Mr. Aruda on Packham Road. Um, he started his road all by himself, I guess. Apparently, apparently he must own an excavator of some sort or a bulldozer or something. So he, you know, the project was supposed to be lift up the road. And instead he came in and he started kind of digging it out, you know. But he also didn't put up any erosion control at all. So, um... After a meeting? Yeah, so after that one then. Well, yeah. you said it was there, the company stated they were going to be done in two weeks, right? They were going to be done with what? With erosion right. control? Right. Well, yeah, that, um, that's what I was going to say. The engineer mm -hmm. um, from Zenith, actually, he's not mm. a partner, um, I met with him out there. Well, he was out there with Mr. Aruda for a while, mm -hmm. and then I met with him, and um, and I'll tell you, I fell in the mud there. I mean, I didn't fall in. I stepped off, mm -hmm. up to my hips, both <gasps> legs. I went to get out, and I put my hand on the ground, and I went in up to my elbow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so there's some really soft spots up the side of that room. Bob, Bob. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of Bob, he would just went right down to his knee. It was Man. a man. So how, so how, it was a I thought it saved him. So, so yeah. really, how, how did he... Imagine. Well, because the engineering company was adamant about was good, getting good. that control in place prior to any activity. Right? Yeah, yeah, but he... Um, that was, yeah, that was uh, supposed to be how it went. But, you know, like I said, he started early. Um, so we got the engineer back involved. They actually hired another uh, well and specialist as well. They hired uh, Brandon Thanet mm -hmm. to... Um, Zenith company? The Zenith engineer? Zenith, well, no, uh, Mr. Ruda. Oh. Actually, Josh talked to him. I mean, Jamie talked him into uh, hiring Brandon. But um, because he did enough damage and he went past where they were going to, you know, what they were going to call the limit of work, and he went into the wetland, so in some places they couldn't really figure out how to uh, fix it, you know. Mm -hmm. So they brought Brandon. In. So this is recently within the last after the last meeting. Yes. Um, after the last site visit. Yeah, after the last, the last site. site visit that you guys were yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I was out there meeting Jamie after that, and um, yeah, so it was after that that I fell in. But I go by there a lot. Like I drive by all the time, make sure it's not doing anything. And um, so nothing's happening right now, but they they were waiting to get in the straw bottles. Mm -hmm. And what he wants to do, what Jamie wants to do, is to put the straw bottles that they bought, which are about this big, mm -hmm. um, along the wetland line. And then put a silt sock, like they were talking about for mm -hmm. this one, um, which is blown in place. And they want to put that one along the edge of... Uh, as a kind of a marker for him? With the, the yeah. first... With yeah, the, what, as, uh, yes, as, as the, as the edge of work, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, so nobody goes over that. And then in between those two, there will be some reparations done to, to get it back to life, you know, because right now it's just mud. So, uh, you know, so it's this so the, plan... So the project is stopped right now, ceased until... The, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that's going to happen this season is um, he's got some, like, hills kind of along the edges. Uh, he was calling them firm, I think. But, it's, you know, they're pretty good size. So Jamie was saying he's going to make them, you know, uh, rake those smooth, you know, so you don't have these big hills here. And then put down the erosion control. Mm -hmm. And then that should be it for the year. You know, the weather is going to where it should keep them, be. Yeah, keep them going. So he really didn't follow any of the advice that we gave him. Remind me what the advice was. Wait until the erosion control is in place, all the way around the property. Oh, yeah, no, he didn't, you know, originally, no, he didn't at all. He, you know, he just, like I said, he just decided to get started, you know. And, uh, and then when we got him, but when people do that, What's that? Aren't there fines? Uh, well, 
to get it why you have a commission order. Mm -hmm. and the then, first time that it blew off the wall there, that one? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and he ignored that, and maybe that was my fault, maybe because it blew off the wall, although I did put one in his back door. Mm -hmm. um, and then I gave him an enforcement order, and um, that's when he called, and that's when Jamie got back involved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while there's a help with him, there's not really it make any yeah. sense to fine him. You know, I mean, what we want to do is for him to spend the money to do it right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so. And why is he resisting? Is it a cost factor? I mean, it was, you know, you remember the plans for this big long roll, it was one whole page of erosion control. Yeah. So, I don't know how to use that. Yeah. Where's Jamie? Jamie told me that this is the second customer he's ever had that he's thought about quitting. You know, he told him, he's, you know, walk the straight and narrow or I'm out of here. So. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now, you know, he's working on us. Yeah. Slowly, but it's coming. But more so Jamie. Well, like I said, Jamie, Jamie says he's keeping an eye on Josh Aruda and, you know, like what he told me last time I saw him, is he was texting him every day. You know, so they're in touch. Yeah. You know? So he's, he's trying to keep him. So when's the, when is that, now that this deadline, you know, that wasn't a deadline per se, but... The estimated time of work to be completed was two weeks from the last meeting, which would have been today. That's not done. To put down the, so what, the erosion control? Yeah. So um, was there an estimated time to complete that? I didn't. Extended them? I didn't ask because uh -huh. they, uh, it's a, you know, you have to bring a company in to do those silt talks. And so I would imagine a lot of it has to do with their Scheduling. scheduling you know. But, um, but yeah, no, the idea is to get it done. Yeah, this month. So, um, mm -hmm. so, so if I don't see any any kinds of progress in any way, I'll, I'll you know, get on it again. Yeah. So what's the next steps for you? I'm just gonna keep watching them. Yeah. That's all you can do is keep an eye on it. <coughs> right. Right. Yeah, and hopefully you know it'll go get fixed. Well, we always hope for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we always do. <laughs> But, but that's about the only one that's really giving us any trouble at the moment is, you know, pretty much everybody is trying to finish stuff up or going to wait till the spring to, to do any building, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's all I have. Is it, oh, uh, you know about hours in town hall, right? You know that we're moving. Um, you moved, What right? else? Anything else going on in town hall we think you need to know about? Oh, we are closed on Friday afternoon at 11.30 because we are open on Tuesday nights till 7. Everybody? Everybody. Yeah, they're all here till 7. And they all meet at 6. <laughs> the selectmen meet around 5 or 5.30. And the historical commission meets around 6.30. And the finance committee, when they feel like it, they, they meet right at 6 or 6.30, I think. So it's so that's all on Tuesday. So they're open, but they're not open. at 7, so I don't see them closing. No. Right. The meeting. They're open. If they're having a meeting? Well, at the office, there's somebody in the office. Yeah. Oh, yeah, still still yeah. need, if you need to go to the clerk's office, there's going to be, somebody's going to be in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. They close at 11.30? On Friday afternoon. Why even open? It's closed. Well, that's fine. Well, we tried that last year. We tried year. that last year. Yeah. It's difficult, but different. Aren't you opening a half hour earlier also? No. I thought it was a... They still, no, they shaved some time off for lunches. And did okay. It that way instead. Because it was hard. We were staying until 8 last time. Yeah. And that was really long. And I think, too, there's a lot of yeah. contractors yeah. and different people that they come for sign-offs to, to, to conservation and they come to the Board of Health that I work in. Yeah. And they're looking to still keep their production ongoing. So if you don't have a Board of Health agent on clerks there, or, or a conservation yeah. agent, that people were complaining a little bit. So I think the town administrator kind of said, like, well, let's stay open on Friday, and then you know people can plan accordingly to get these permits. Yeah. And get you know once you get on our schedule, you, it's a little bit harder, but 
eventually we'll all be on the same page and they'll have to plan accordingly a little bit. But they also can come in at 7 o'clock at night if it's raining or snowing and come and pull permits and come and visit Marilee or yeah. me. Well, <laughs> right. Just try yeah. it. It's, See it's, how it works. Right. I think we're agreed to a contract till September of 2019. So what, for, for this, yeah. for this yeah. one year. Yeah. Because so, yeah. uh, uh, I think... Let's time to get acclimated. I think some of management really likes the idea mm -hmm. and some of bigger management is not so sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it's a trial period for a year. And it makes for a nice weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think once, you know, the, the customers and residents understand the PD yeah. problem permits and, you know, mm -hmm. once they know we're open and then know we get here later too. So some people get to work at five, but yeah, on their way home they can stop in the pay bill right. and they can mm -hmm. plan accordingly. But I think last time it was a very short period of time that we tried it. And it could be closed on Friday sometimes maybe. No, it just didn't work for everybody. So I think this is a nice trial period to check it nice out. Nice meeting in the middle. Yeah, nice meeting in the middle, right. Okay. Anything, anything else, else, anyone? Oh, and anything on that other number? You mean Mark? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I still haven't written in any any order or anything because we've been moving over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll, I'll make sure I get that done this week. This week, I guess. This is Tuesday. I can do it next week. Yeah, I really think he has to send something into the order. Just a formal, the just a formal. Yeah, I mean, I'll I don't want him to leave. As a formality. I don't want him to leave. I know. Mm -hmm. No, but he's gone. He's been gone yeah. for yeah. months yeah. now. We might as well get him to sign out so we can get somebody else who wants to do it. Mm -hmm. Just to make it official. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all have friends that are dying to get on the commission. <laughs> 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 Bob. Bob might, yeah. Yeah, he might. Who's that woman who raises bees in, uh, where does she live? Yeah. I don't know. She, yeah. I don't know yet. I mean, she doesn't live. She doesn't live here. She's going to build a house oh. on Gammon's Road, I think. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a big sign at the edge of her, the edge of her own yeah. property okay. that says, oh, it's let, let, me, let me run this by the table again. Is there any other business? <laughs> if not, I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second, second on that motion. Second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Motion carries. What time is it? Uh, Being is adjourned at? 6.44. 6.44? 6.44. 6.44. Fantastic.